Right, it's Drickers versus Izzy fight week. So I thought I'd do the completely unproblematic, most African UFC fighter tier list. Now obviously, this is just a joke. But just so things don't get too spicy, I'll lay down the ground rules. I ain't gonna be going down the race road, I'll leave that to Izzy. We're talking more like best representative of their country. I'll also consider factors like national pride, how they conduct themselves in and out of the octagon, and how good they are and how likeable they are may also play into it a little, cause why not, I make the rules. So let's get started. First off, I'm gonna address the elephant in the room. No, not that one, Mike Perry. You all knew it was coming, I thought I'd get it out the way. As we all know, 2% African, so I am legally allowed to say the word. All right, that's enough of that. So while Mike Perry shows tremendous pride in his Africanness, and he conducts himself like an absolute superstar, he has, however, himself revealed his biggest problem, for this list at least, that he is only a 2 percenter. Sorry, Platinum, you're going in D. On to probably my favourite fighter on this list, Kamara Usman. Now, he did have a little lapse in judgment when he did the whole Marty thing, but otherwise, he's a brilliant representative of his country, he's proud of his roots, and let's face it, the dude's a goat. I mean, of the world weight, at least, for sure. Bilal Mohammed might be serving him up 50-45s on Twitter recently, but this is the man that stepped in upper weight class and took on Kamsa on two weeks' notice, and he was an incredibly active champion, which I'm sure we're all missing right now given us some incredibly entertaining fights. Now, he can't be S tier because he's so American at this point, growing up here and training here and living here. But come on, he's a Nigerian nightmare, A tier. Let's quickly get a couple of lower rank guys out of the way before we get onto the big guns. Cameron Simon, nice guy, good little contender. He's had a couple of losses recently, but against solid opponents. Born and raised in South Africa, he trains there, he fights from there. You might have seen him on a podcast with MMA Guru. He's ticking all the boxes, but he isn't ranked. He's on a losing streak, and I can't put everyone on A tier. So Cameron is going in B tier. Sadiq Youssef, not a bad little featherweight. He seems to lose all his important fights. Nice guy though, and he reps the Nigerian flag often. Although another heavily Americanized fighter, B tier. Then we have Israel Adesanya. See Kiwis, we love a good one now. You know, I'm not a New Zealander, I'm Australian. Black outside, China inside. English, English. You can take the boy out of Africa, but you can never take the Africa out of the, out of the boy. Bay, the black Kiwi's gonna fly all day. I'm the black dragon. Ah, well, in fairness, Izzy does mention being African quite a lot as long as he's not in New Zealand or Australia or, or China. He's also a very high profile athlete and he's had a really successful career so far. Sadly though, he conducts himself like a special needs on a speed day. This combined with the fact that from 10 he grew up in New Zealand, he trains in New Zealand and fights out of New Zealand and he does switch up his national pride a little bit when money or popularity is on the table, all stops him from getting into A tier. Now C tier, feels like it might be a little bit too rude. So, another B tier. Menel Cap, another low rank guy. He was born in Angola, but he's Portuguese in nationality. And he trains and fights out of Thailand. He's going at the bottom of B tier. Then we got Drickus Duplessis. Now Drickus is the one that started all of this. If you go back and listen to those early interviews, he definitely was pushing it a little. There was definitely some shade thrown towards some African fighters, and he knew exactly what he was doing. So while Izzy threw insecurities about his identity, bit on the bait big time, and ended up making himself look like a bit of a sausage, going in the cage drunk and shouting the N-word, and then going on a little racially charged campaign, it was Drickus who started it. But the man is born and raised in South Africa, he lives and trains there, and he's very vocally proud of that. So you have gotta give it to him, he's very African. You won't catch him with a Chinese flag. Drickus is going in A tier. And then S tier. I'm giving to Francis Ngannou. He's an incredible human. Yes, he left Cameroon for France at 26, but he was born and raised there, working in the sand quarries at 10 years old for fuck's sake. He's also a very proud African and goes back and visits his family often. What he's achieved is an inspiration. And on top of that, through it all, he remains a down-to-earth, humble guy. So there you go. Now, obviously, this was all just a bit of fun, and it is ridiculous to actually judge people's nationality in this way. But like I said, it's Izzy and Drickers fight week, and between them, they created this silly narrative, so it seemed like an obvious satire on the whole thing. This should be a good fight week and a good fight. Here's a little fight preview I made for the main event if you haven't seen it. And if you like this video, give us a sub. I'll see you next time.